That is what we share most of all. Not where we are going, but where we come from, and how we move forward. Together we rise to the point of freedom. We need one another to get there, and one of the most beautiful things we do in the fellowship is support one another in pursuit of our dreams. Sharing our hopes and our successes is as much a part of carrying our message as sharing our fears and difficulties. We have a message of hope to carry. It's a gift and an obligation. We may not relate exactly to one another's dreams, but we can relate to the hope, energy, and excitement of trying to realize them. We are inspired by one another's journey. Being present to one another's growth gives us the tools and inspiration to move forward ourselves. We also find we are able to stay put, follow through, and live the lives we create. Our recovery is something you can trust and believe in. New beginnings are possible anytime we are ready. Living Clean Approval Graph for Decision at WSC 2012 a spiritual path. Key. Key steps are a path to spiritual growth. There is no separation between the spiritual part and the rest of our program. Just as the facets of a diamond are not separate from the stone, the spiritual aspects of our program are not separate parts, they are perspectives on the whole. It's all spiritual. Our understanding of what that means may change over time. Sometimes we think of spiritual principles as separate from the action we need to take, but in fact they are connected. Spiritual principles give us a language through which we develop our values and learn to live by them. The principles describe our beliefs, our actions, and the reasons we act. Our relationship to the principles we practice is creative. We learn from day to day to use them in new ways, in new combinations, to better express who we are and to help the people around us. When we understand them better, we are able to act more consistently with what we believe. As we practice spiritual principles, we discover that this doesn't make us spiritual at all. Instead, we are awakening to what has been going on inside us our whole lives. Spirituality is our natural state. Awakening to our spirituality. We are not the only people who have spiritual awakenings, but there is a particular awakening we experience as a result of working the steps we awaken to our own spirituality. We are newly alive to the world around us. We see more clearly and feel more acutely, and it isn't always comfortable. Some of our members believe that the most important spiritual awakening occurs when we walk in the door of Narcotics Anonymous, and we spend the rest of our recovery trying to understand what happened. For others of us, awakening, like so much else in recovery, seems to happen in layers. The fog pulled back to where I could see how much fog there was, then one. Each time it pulls back, I see more on the horizon. I have a sense of how big it is and how much I still can't see. With a little luck, I'll be waking up more and more my whole life. Some of us have awakened spiritually with an overwhelming sense of a power greater than ourselves. Others have shared a slow, gentle reviving of spiritual awareness, whether or not we ever experience a sense of a higher power. The discovery that others care about us can be a spiritual awakening. For the first time we recognize that we matter. Living according to principles leads us to humility, a greater awareness of our place in the world and our ability to live comfortably in it. We often hear at meetings, the most important thing to understand about a higher power is that you ain't it. Whatever it takes for us to realize that we are not the center of the universe, it's worth it. We may be too clever to declare ourselves as the supreme being, but our self-centered disease still tells us that we are responsible for much more.
getting into conflicts at all. That doesn't mean that we always agree with anyone or everything, or that we suddenly lose the power to stand up for what's right. On the contrary, we learn when to step forward and when to back away. Some struggles are worth fighting. 29. 30. Even if we know we cannot win, just as some are not worth fighting even though our victory is sure. This is discernment, and it comes from our experience. We learn to tell the difference between a principle we need to stand for and an opinion that we just won't let go of. We are able to choose for ourselves when to stand up and when to surrender, and as we practice we get better at determining which is right for us. Learning to accept the things we cannot change and take action where it is appropriate is not just part of recovering from addiction, it is part of growing up. Many of us are like overgrown children, still wanting to make things our way without regard for anything else. Often this means that we go through a painful adolescence in the room, whatever our age. Maturity comes to us when we use spiritual principles rather than defects to deal with reality. Incorporating principles into our lives allows us to understand the difference between right and wrong. Many of our most crippling defects become powerful assets when we let go of self-centered fear. Many times in our addiction we experienced a moment of clarity when we could see the truth about what we had become, but that awareness in itself did not bring change. Effort is necessary for change to occur. Our lives change because we take action. Some of us say that we are applying spiritual principles because it means we're acting in some particular way. Others of us prefer to say we are practicing principles because we know we can always get better at it. However we say it, action is what matters. Our primary action is surrender, and we come back to it every day. There is always room to let go a little more. There is great freedom and understanding that we always have the option to surrender. In the beginning we may be confused and think we need to surrender to our disease. In fact, that's what most of us were doing before we got here. In active addiction, we turned our will over to our disease every day. In recovery we learn to surrender to the process, to the program, and ultimately to a power greater than ourselves. When we give up the battle we place ourselves entirely in the care of a power greater than ourselves. It follows naturally that we commit ourselves to the service of that power, however we understand it. Surrender means having the open-mindedness to see things in a new way, as well as the willingness to live differently. When we open ourselves to new perspectives we may find more questions where we had hoped to see answers. Each time we can see possibilities that had not occurred to us before, we gain a little more freedom. We are free to change our minds, to change our perspective, and to change our lives. Freedom means that we are no longer living by default. More and more we see how much courage surrender requires. We see the miracle of recovery in action when an addict we didn't think would make it actually gets the message. We can see new hope in their eyes. The contrast is so sharp that we can't miss it. We can also recognize the miracle when we find words a suffering addict needs to hear even though we didn't think we knew what to say. When we hear ourselves carry a powerful message, we know we are being helped as much as the person we are reaching out to. Finding that we already have the answers we need is like finding a gift on our doorstep. When we are having a hard time, the best thing we can do for ourselves is to accept that gift by 
by helping someone else. Living Green Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. Chapter 3, A Spiritual Path. 31, A Spiritual, Not Religious Program. Each of us has our own spiritual path. As we explore our spirituality we find ourselves on a journey of self-discovery. When we live with spiritual awareness, we find harmony with the God of our understanding, with ourselves, and with others. There is no single recipe for spirituality. Each of us finds our own way to live spiritually, and that allows us freedom to make choices about how we live. It also charges us with responsibility. We cannot pretend that spirituality is not central to the Na program or the Na way of life. But there is room within that for people of all beliefs, including those with no belief at all. Our right to our own spirituality in Na is unconditional, and that also means we must allow that right to others. It's not very complicated, but this is one area of our recovery that we seem to love to complicate. Any single definition of spiritual principles will be too restrictive for us. Our traditions remind us that Na is not a place where any single spiritual path is endorsed. Finding a spirituality that works for us can be one of the most important challenges that we face in recovery, and yet we are often afraid to talk about it. We may worry that we will feel out of place or that others will be uncomfortable with what we are sharing. When we are carrying the message, we learn to make the boundary clear between our personal spiritual experiences and the message of Na. Finding a balance in which we are open to one another's experience without creating the impression that we are endorsing a particular religion can be a struggle. While we may pursue a religion or path that uses specific language to refer to spiritual concepts, we ask ourselves how we can express that in a way we can all understand. We use more general language out of respect for all various perspectives in the fellowship, even though in another setting we might use language more specific to our own particular faith. It can be difficult to find a way to talk about our spirituality and still leave the door open for everyone to have their own path, as well. We use many different words to describe our higher power. We do our best to share our deepening spiritual experience in a way that makes it available to everyone in the room. Most importantly, we find people we trust and respect with whom we feel comfortable sharing one-on-one. -on -one. The work doesn't all happen in meetings. We share and explore with our sponsor, in step work, or among our trusted friends. We may not ever have to leave not to find our spirituality, but if our spiritual explorations take place outside the room, it is crucial that we understand that now welcomes us back from every new voyage. Each time, we have new understanding to share and new challenges to work through as a result of our spiritual growth. things about our program is that it works regardless of our different beliefs. Na needs to be a place where we all feel welcome. Even when we're pretty sure everyone in the room shares the same faith, we still need to make sure that the Na message is clear. We don't limit our application of the traditions to those times when we can see a problem they seem to solve. Keeping our message clear helps us all. The more I learn to share my spirituality in Na language, the more clearly I can see the connections between my faith and Na, a member explained. When we find ways to share our new insights using our common language of recovery, our ability 
to carry the now message strengthen. R. Living Queen Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. 32. Fellowship matures and develops as each of us brings our increasing understanding to the table. We grow from one another's experience when we are willing to share and to listen with an open mind. Even though it is so central to our recovery, many of us resist talking about spirituality because it comes so close to a conversation about religion. There are many reasons we may be uncomfortable with this. First of all, it's something many of us have learned not to discuss. We know faith is deeply personal. Others of us don't have a way of talking about it without trying to bring other people's faith in line with our own. We already need to change so much that it's important for us to know that our system of faith, whatever it is, will not be threatened by our program. It may be challenged, though, as we begin to practice our spirituality more actively than we had. We can have philosophical discussions all day long, and never make any progress in our spiritual lives. On the other hand, some of the most spiritual people we know say very little about spirituality. Their quiet example is more powerful than the words. The principles we share in the steps, the traditions, the concepts, and the rest of our literature go a long way toward providing us with a common language we can all understand and identify with. We say over and over that this is a spiritual, not religious program, but this is a mean the program can't work for religious people. Some of us come to now with a foundation in a faith with which we are very comfortable. Others of us find our way to organize religion as a result of the work we do to build a relationship with a higher power in the steps. Some of us find alternative spiritual paths, or find that the spirituality we achieve through the program is enough. There is no right or wrong answer on this. There is no progression that brings us naturally toward or away from organized religion. What is important is that we accept that the program is spiritual in nature, that some of what we depend on here is a great mystery, that some of it doesn't make sense. Many of us say that even after years clean, we still don't know how it works, we just know that it works. Allowing the possibility that there will always be something we don't know means that there is always room for something greater than ourselves to work on us and through us. Some of us have maintained the religious beliefs we grew up with, but in our addiction we compromised ourselves in ways that ran deeply against those beliefs. Many of us had to work so hard to distance ourselves from what our beliefs had been that the way we respond to hearing about them almost feels like an allergy. It can be a long time before we know why that language makes us so uncomfortable. When we start hearing people talk about a higher power, it can feel like we're about to be pushed through all those feelings again, and it's natural that this makes us nervous. We may have negative experiences with religion, or experiences that made our relationship with religion uncomfortable. It can be challenging to face that. Many of us experienced religious efforts to save us from our addiction, and found that faith alone was insufficient to set us free. Or we may have a very well-developed religious faith, and fear that Na is going to ask us to give that up. Whatever our experience, it is critical to our recovery that we find some kind of understanding we can work with. When we are in the process of figuring that out, other Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 3, A Spiritual Path 33 People's opinions about what that should be can feel confusing or threatening. It is imperative that we give one another
another time and space to come to a belief system of our own. On the other hand, we can be too quick to cut off conversations that some of us need to have in order to reconcile our recovery with our other beliefs. A member confessed, I have had a struggle with my faith since coming to Nam. I still practice the faith I grew up with, and have been very active in it since I got clean. But when I came into the rooms and shared about my spiritual awakening, I felt shut down. I left for a while to follow that path, but I realized I need to be here, too, so I find a way to make peace with the gap between them. Without that effort we risk alienating people, are limiting our own understanding of the connections between our spiritual development and our experience in recovery. Spiritual growth may be a struggle sometimes, but that doesn't mean it's going badly. That struggle is often how we get to a spirituality that works for us. Our beliefs grow as our spirits awaken. When we actually experience our beliefs, they become more vital. For some of us, that means finding a style of prayer that resonates with us. We just find other ways to make a conscious contact that suits our beliefs. But the key to spiritual growth is that it is growth, which means it changes, and it's going to change us. A member shared, when I had around 10 years clean, I realized I wasn't being honest in my relationship with God because I was pretending I wasn't angry. I realized if I wasn't honest in that relationship, how did any of my other relationships stand a chance? Each time we recognize an opportunity for spiritual growth, we experience a reawakening of hope. A spiritual journey. Seeking a God of our understanding is a personal experience, but we need to know we are not alone in our search. There is a part of this that is very private, unspeakable in a wonderful way. There are times when we must walk alone with our higher power. As we study the tradition, we learn that nothing which affects our personal recovery is an outside issue, and also that our unity must come first. These spiritual principles are not in conflict, but it might take some thought or prayer to reconcile them. When we are living spiritually, awareness and empathy guide us in our recovery and in our sharing. In the 11th step we ask for the power to carry out God's will for us. In that spirit, we may ask for the words we need to talk about our experience without creating separation or disunity around us. We need to be able to open up about our journey. It doesn't matter so much what name we hit the markers along that road. When we learn to share about our feelings and experiences without naming names, we discover the freedom anonymity has to offer us. We may be surprised at how much we have in common with others who seem to be on very different spiritual paths. When we begin to see the things our journeys have in common, we find that our differences really can help us along the way, instead of creating barriers between us. It can be difficult to express our spiritual experience in words. Because we are talking about things unseen, concrete language usually falls short of what we experience, and the language we have to talk about our spiritual experiences is often borrowed from other places. It takes practice to make it our own. When we are struggling to find words for our experience, the last thing we need is to be told we are doing it wrong. We listen to one another with an living clean approval draft for decision at WSC 2012. 34. Open mind and an open heart, and we share our experience with the understanding that it won't necessarily be shared by everyone else. In the same spirit, we understand that it's hard for other people to share about this, too, and that sometimes we are going to hear things that ask us to be objective.
objective and non-judgmental. Each final phase of surrender, but that does not mean we all come to believe in God. Many of our members have been clean for years as atheists. For some of us, coming to believe does not can accommodate our atheism has itself been a leap of faith. We are welcome no matter what we believe. Not has no opinion on how our members define or practice spirituality. Our individual challenge is to find a definition of spirituality that makes sense to us. By listening carefully and with an open mind to a range of members' opinions and experiences, we form our own understanding that we can use in our own recovery. A member shared, I didn't hear anyone talking about atheism as a legitimate path in recovery, but I accepted that. I did with spirituality what I was learning to do with other aspects of the program, I took what I needed and left the rest behind. Over the years I have accepted that other people's ideas about spirituality, ethics, and God are much different from my own. Part of the strength and beauty of Na is that there is room for all of us. What others call spiritual principles, I call ethical principles. Whatever they are called, the principles and the steps and traditions led us away from active addiction, self-centeredness, and fear. When we help someone who is struggling, we break free from our self-obsession. When we give back, we cannot be greedy. We have found no limit to the possibilities of recovery for any member who practices the principles of Na, whether we call these principles spiritual or not. For some of us, the spiritual is simply the unseen or the intangible. Each of us has complete autonomy and anonymity in whatever concept we find for ourselves. The phrase, as we understood him, can be a sticking point for many of us.